Hey guys, it's been a while since we talked about the subject. However, with the new information coming out about Inundary Simulator's newest character, who is the indestructible rival, as well as Alex's financial situation, I thought now would be the best time to explore Alex's past finances. Now the reason I'm bringing this up is over on Kiwi, as Alex has a Kiwi thread, Cleveland Rock, one of his biggest supporters, has mentioned the possibility of him stopping development altogether after he implements Osana. Also, in his blog post, he mentioned that the new character, who is the indestructible rival, I'm not even going to try to pronounce her name, would um, come out at the same time as Osana. Therefore, I think this is an appropriate time to look at the idea of like a Kickstarter crowdfunding thing and see how justified of idea this would be, as he has stated in the past that he hopes to start a crowdfunding project after Osana's been implemented. Now, on the official Yandere Simulator subreddit, which is a case we will touch upon in the future, there's been some discussion on how much the game has actually made, and whether or not a Kickstarter is something Alex should realistically be asking for. Now, before we get into this, I would like to reiterate that this is all an estimation, however, it does line up with the transparency posts he makes on Patreon. Additionally, I want to make these points clear. As I just stated, this is an estimation. However, this estimation is based on the largest fees Patreon can cause, so this is going to be a low estimate. The Patreon fees are included in this estimate. He is also technically self-employed, therefore his taxes are going to be higher. I did not take that into consideration, however I will show an estimation of what he could have paid. All resources will be in the description below. I'm gathering all the information for Patreon from Graphion, which seems to be a reliable resource. Additionally, I took all of the information from the last day of every month, as the amount made drops on the first day of every month, and the middle of the month is always in flux. After entering all the data into a spreadsheet, we are able to calculate the fees Patreon takes out. The spreadsheet will be in the description below, so feel free to download and see exactly how each fee is calculated. Now this is where it gets slightly complicated. With YouTube, there is only one fee it takes out. However, Patreon has three separate fees all of which have their own stipulations. This is coming directly from the Patreon support page, and we will go over all the stipulations here. The three fees are as follows. Platform fees, payment processing fees, and payout fees. Now these may seem daunting at first glance, however we can take them step by step. If you want to skip this part, there is a timestamp on screen that you can skip to. For those who are still here, we are going to break down each individual fee. First, the platform fee. This fee covers the use of Patreon's membership platform. The Legacy Founders platform fee is 5% of successfully processed payments. This means that we only take money if the creator is making money. Breaking this down, it means that 5% of all payments that are not declined or otherwise cancelled will be taken just for using the platform. Therefore, this applies to every payment cycle and every payment processed. Two, payment processing fees. This is the cost of moving funds from your patrons to your creator balance. This fee can be viewed in your creator account settings. Payment processing fees cover the cost of Patreon's robust payment architecture, plus the fees our payment processors charge each time they process a successful pledge or refund. Payment processors charge a percentage of the transaction, plus a fixed number of the cents per transaction. Your payment processing fees will vary based on your tier amounts, your patron's method of payment, and VAT. Shared patronage can reduce your processing fees. Shared patronage is when you have patrons in common with other creators on Patreon. To provide an optimal patron experience, Patreon processes all of a patron's pledges on one transaction each month and delivers one receipt to the patron. The creators included in this one transaction will benefit from sharing the transaction fee. Tier amount can increase or decrease your effective processing rate due to the fixed fee component. While the fixed fee varies due to Patreon payment method and shared patronage, it can be as high as $0.30 cents per transaction. We generally recommend keeping your lowest tier price above $1 to avoid a high processing fee effective rate. Another way to look at it. If you have many patrons with small pledge amounts, then the processing fees will be a larger percentage of your overall earnings. If you have just a few patrons with large pledge amounts, then the processing fees will be a smaller percentage of your overall earnings. This fee is more complicated. We know Alex lives in California, therefore we can completely ignore the EU portion of this. In this, however, they give us a high-end estimate of 30 cents per patron. This is why we have the patrons in the spreadsheet. 
for each patron, we take 30 cents out. Now this fee is the hardest to calculate due to how many variables it has, and this is where I say again, this is an estimation, and it is why we are going with the 30 cents per patron. 3. Payout fees. The charge for moving funds from your creator balance to your bank, PayPal, or Payoneer account. This fee is not listed in your fees breakdown within your creator dashboard. This fee is only taken once you transfer funds out of your Patreon account and toward your bank account. In order to estimate this fee, we have to move to a separate page. However, this page is linked by Patreon themselves, so this is verified and valid information. Transfer fees. Your Patreon account balance already reflects the removal of your platform fee and payment processing fees, which vary based on your patron's method of payment. When you manually withdraw your balance or have Patreon do an automatic withdrawal on the 5th of every month, an additional fee is removed based on your payout method. U.S. creators receiving payment via direct deposit, $0.25 cents per payout. U.S. creators receiving payment via PayPal, 1% of the amount transferred with a minimum of $0.25, cents, capped at $20. US dollars. Again, because we know Alex lives in the U.S., we can ignore the international fees and stipulations. If he collects his earnings through direct deposit, he is being charged $0.25 cents per payout. If he uses PayPal, it's 1% of the amount transferred with a minimum of $0.25, cents. however they can take no more than $20. Now with all of those boring terms and conditions out of the way, it's time to begin calculating. Because the spreadsheet and all formulas are available below, I am not going to go into too much detail as to the exact calculation per payment. We are going to plug this all into the spreadsheet using three separate parts so we can see the fees easily. We are going to look at the fees first, then the income, then his total profit from Patreon. His Patreon began in April of 2015, and it is still going to this day. Therefore, we have fees from then on. 2015 is the only year he did not have an entire year's worth of earnings from the platform, therefore some of those numbers are going to be outliers. We are also going to include the first half of 2019, ending directly on June 30th, 2019. Platform Fees 2015 $1,779.65 2016 $3,081.15 2017 $3,054.45 2018 $2,356.95 and for the first half of 2019 $821.75 In total, over the course of four years, Patreon has collected $11,093.95 from Alex and the platform fees alone. Payment fees 2015 $1,905 2016 $2,968.50 2017 $3,564.90 2018 $3,000 The first half of 2019 $781.80 Over the course of the four years he has been on the platform, Patreon has collected $12,220.20 from Alex and payment fees. While editing this video, I realized I made a miscalculation in my PayPal fees. Instead of calculating the fees for the entire year, I accidentally only calculated fees per month. Instead of it being only $20 per year, it is actually $240 per year. The on-screen graphics are going to stay with the $20 calculation, however I will correct myself in the description below and I have also added this disclaimer. I apologize for any confusion this may have caused. Now for the payout fees. We decided to go with the PayPal stipulations as we do know Alex has a PayPal account and accepts private donations there. Therefore we feel he'd rather place all of his payments in that one account and go from there. Using the PayPal stipulations, 2015, $20. 2016, $20. 2017, $20. 2018, $20. 2019, $20. Thanks to the collection cap, Alex only pays $20 per year in PayPal fees. This totals in $100 in payout fees. I will admit, this is a crazy amount for Patreon to be making. However, let's look at his income before we take the fees out. Yearly income before fees. 2015, $35,593. 2016, 
$61,623. 2017, $61,089. 2018, $47,139. And in the first half of 2019, $16,435. In total, over the course of four years on Patreon, Alex has made $221,879. For context, here is the average household income of the United States and California for both 2016 and 2017. The reason we are only using these two years is because they are the only two years in which we have the full income information for both Alex and that of the average households. The average yearly household income for the United States in 2016 was $58,856, and for 2017 it was $60,336. The average yearly household income for the state of California in 2016 was $69,196, and in 2017 it was $71,805. After we factor in the fees from Patreon, Alex's total income from Patreon per year is 2015, $31,888.35 2016, $55,553.35 2017, $54,449.65 2018, $41,762.05 and for the first half of 2019, $14,811.45. This brings his total income for four years up to $198,484.85. From Patreon alone, after fees, yet before any taxes, he has made almost $200,000. Now, we are going to focus on 2017 alone for a bit. In 2017, a user made a post on the subreddit attempting to calculate how much Alex makes per hour working on the game. She defined working on the game as coding the game. Alex responded to this post with a post of his own, and I was able to deconstruct these two claims and see how they stack up against each other. If we follow Alex's claims, in 2017 he was making anywhere from $12.18 an hour to $14.10 an hour. This is based on his definition of working on the game, which includes checking emails, general work on the game, volunteer interactions, and Reddit interactions. Compared to Madeline's post, which claims he made anywhere from $80.10 an hour all the way up to $91.68 an hour. Madeline Nolan's comments explaining her side seem to have been removed from the post. However, thanks to sites like Removed Reddit, we can still see them. In a now-deleted comment, she states, I wanted to see how much time he actually had left in the day to code his game. At the end of writing it, I decided I also wanted to calculate how much he was paid from Patreon per hour worked on the game coding. When I used the word work in my title, I was specifically talking about coding and implementing assets. I will go and clarify my wording, so I apologize for that on my part. The spreadsheet containing all of this information can be found in the description below. We are going to look at his transparency post from 2017, as this is the year we have the most data for. According to him, he made $5,120.18 in January, $5,268.68 in February, $4,976.85 in March, $5,168.45 in April, $4,919.34 in May, $4,935.48 in June, $4,702.56 in July, $4,786.04 in August, $4,752.13 in September, $4,549.06 in October, $4,909.67 in November, and finally, $4,751.23 in December. This totals to $58,839.67 for the year. Compared to our estimate, after fees of $54,449.65, I'd say we're about as accurate as we're going to get. This is where you guys have to formulate your own opinions. In the transparency posts, which are linked below, Alex claims he takes $3,500 per month for his salary. We'll revisit this in a minute. 
while using $1,862 over the year of 2017 to compensate the volunteers. Now Madeline states, in my eyes at least, you get paid all of that money. However, you distribute it to your volunteers or place it aside for the game. I am aware of that and actually mentioned it in one of my comments, I believe. I'm not saying the money is pure profit. However, it is in your name and going into your account until you redistribute it. So you can really look at this either way. Either he is making only 3.5 k a month, which would total to $42,000 a year, while the rest goes into a fund for the game, or you can look at it as if he's taking anywhere from $2,105 to $5,514 a month and spending his own money to make the game better. However, this is complicated as of late due to the Patreon dropping below 3.5k by almost $1,000 as of July 2019. This is even further complicated when you realize Alex still lives at home, and due to this, he either has a fraction of an actual living expense, if he has any at all. Therefore, most of that 3.5k he was getting per month was pure profit. Finally, when you realize that he admitted to purchasing a subreddit in 2018 with his own personal savings, it begins to raise a question as to where this money is actually going. He states that Yandere Simulator is his full-time job in the same post. Therefore, the money he is making from the game is going into his savings. Now, it is rumored that he could have spent, or at the very least offered, $10,000 for the subreddit, which causes more concern as he is still speaking of a crowdfunding campaign. He states, the surplus is currently at $26,027.16. I'd like to share another fact about the surplus. If Yandere Simulator needs 100k in order to become a reality, and I have a surplus of 26k, then I only need to ask for 74k when I do the crowdfunding campaign. No matter what, that money is going towards the game's development. Again, over the four years he's been on Patreon, not including his YouTube revenue or private donations, He's made, after fees, $198,484.85. Even after taxes, this isn't looking too good. Either a mistake has been made in my calculations, in which case I would gladly correct myself and admit fault, or Alex is very bad at handling money. Now, after all of that, do you feel the game needs a crowdfunding campaign? Or is it even justified in planning and setting one up? Personally, I feel that he has been crowdfunding this entire time. He has been collecting money from Patreon since 2015. Pair that with YouTube and Twitch, as well as private donations. There is no way of knowing how many he gets, if any, I will say. But giving him more money doesn't make any sense to me. Of course, I encourage you guys to look into it yourself and formulate your own opinions. Thank you for sticking with me through the entire video. Next time we revisit this topic, we will be looking at the subreddit sale and what happens there. Please remember to subscribe if you want to see that, and ring the bell if you want a notification for when that comes out. Thank you guys again, and I will see you next time.